All right. Well, good morning and good afternoon. Uh, we are coming to you live for our second ever monthly hashtag stream, our swag. So uh, streaming to you live today, we couldn't be uh, more excited. I'm Eric Reed, Consumer Vice President for the West. And uh, we're here in Inglewood in Southern California. So a couple of fun facts about Inglewood. Um, we're actually building out our 5G ultra wide uh, band network, which is being built right now. And we're directly across from the SoFi Stadium, which is home to the Rams, the Chargers, as well as Super Bowl 56 coming in February. So if you haven't joined one of these live streams, these are all about you. So it's how do we take topics we're curious about in the business and unpack them, elevate them, uh, and really learn more together. Uh, today is all about gaming. And if you've been following, we've been quickly establishing ourselves in this space. So think about our Apple partnership, Google Play, our 5G ultra wide band network, and the ability to take a gaming experience and bringing it mobile, something that really hasn't been done uh, until now. So we're excited about that. Coming off the announcement last month of E3, where Verizon committed $1 million to increase female representation uh, in gaming and STEM through the Verizon Game Forward Scholarship. So we're excited. So perfect time is now to talk about gaming. Uh, just a reminder, this is an interactive session, so please feel free to go to slido.com. That's slido.com, hashtag Verizon, uh, and we'll take any questions you have here towards the end of the session. So, hey, I'm excited to be joined by some special guests from around the country. So quickly, uh, up first today, we're going to hear from Christopher Brazil. He's a 5G home sales account manager, followed by David Rhodes out of uh, Baltimore, D.C., an area specialist whose passion is gaming, uh, followed by Sebastian Castillo, a Philadelphia solution specialist who enjoys streaming console games. So we're going to learn more about that. And lastly, Mark Chang, who's our director of gaming and partnerships. So say hi and give us a fun fact, Mark. All right. Hey, Eric. Thanks for having me, Mark Chang. Um, one fun fact, so I've been a gamer my entire life. I grew up playing fighting games. That was my jam growing up. And so I grew up in Chicago where I played a ton of Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. That's actually the birthplace of Mortal Kombat is in Chicago. And my fun fact is that my martial arts instructors were actually the people who were mo-capped into the game. No way. So Mortal Kombat 1, 2, and 3, um, they were the guys that I actually trained with in, uh, in Wushu Kung Fu. Tony Marquez, who played Kung Lao, the guy with the hat, yep, yep. he was in Mortal Kombat 2 and 3, still a really good friend of mine. So that's my fun fact. So that is awesome. Gaming to real life to life to gaming. That is awesome. So you guys can hear more from Mark. So uh, if you don't know, I lead the vision team for the consumer group when it comes to gaming. So Mark and I kind of stumbled across one another. I didn't even know that we had a director of gaming partnerships, but I will argue that it's probably the best job in the company. So Mark's going to tell us uh, more about it. But Mark has been gracious the last few months to educate me and really help our cause as we bring gaming to our customer and our employees. So with that, what I'd like to do is move to Christopher Brazil, joining us out of Florida. So good afternoon, Christopher. Hello, how are you guys doing, Eric and Mark? We're doing well. I know you told us that uh, you, got, you go by Brazil, so I'll try to keep it straight, but uh, we might go uh, back and forth and interchange it. So, hey, so I learned a little bit about you. So uh, let's just start the conversation. Your job is to ensure building managers and stores in the Miami area understand what sets Verizon ultra wideband apart. So I think it'd be great for the team to start off with, how do you bring up and how do you introduce that conversation? Because in some regards, people might not even know what that technology means. Yeah, you know, what, what I honestly bring it up with is uh, just discovering pain points. I think that's probably the most important part. I mean, we can discuss all the, the benefits that 5G has and the speeds and the ping rates, but really it, it it depends on you know who your, your your individual is, right? So if I'm talking to a property manager and uh, they're telling me that you know they have fiber to the building from one of our competitors, and uh, but they're not getting that speed. So when you hear fiber, you're hearing fast internet. You're hearing these that information. You know it's it's kind of that symbiotic word. Fiber means fast, but sometimes they don't get that. So when I come in and talk about 5G and how we don't have to put fiber to the building and how we don't have to actually plug any holes inside of there and that it's available to their residents, you know, for them, it's music to their ears. They're, they have the ability to let their residents know that this is available to them. And, you know, as we all know, you know, gaming, platforming, you know, uh, you know, a lot of content and media, the internet is super important now. It's probably the most important thing to any new renter. Uh, and same goes for our, uh, for our general managers and other retail that we're talking about. You know, really it's what their pain point you know, we, you know, a lot of people are younger and they want to game where they want to game. They don't want to just do it at home. They want to do it everywhere. And when you have the ability to do it not only at home, 
but take it with you all under the 5G umbrella. I mean, it's just a, it's kind of that type of situation. It's just a yeah. win-win. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I think we all learned over this past year that broadband to the home couldn't matter more than ever when you think about doing work from home, school from home, gaming. So I think that the, the value proposition obviously is interesting there. And just while we're on the topic, just quickly for, our, for the stores, right, because we, we have our consumer team on, how do you talk to the stores about it to get them to understand the value props so we can talk, uh, you know, in our own terms about the capabilities to our customers? You know, uh, I think one of the, the biggest standpoints is the um, is the speed, right? I mean, a lot of times we're talking, you know, 50, 100 megs per second at our competitors and or even a gig per second, right? But that's network best. Um, when, you know, these guys are getting super excited when I'm telling them that it's very possible that um, we're seeing speeds at a minimum of 300 megs per second, you know, that's that's our starting point. You know, I've been on the field and I've seen speeds on my phone as fast as 3.5 gigs per second with a 12, you know, second ping rate or 12 millisecond ping rate. I apologize. And when I'm having those conversations with the GM and a lot of the people in the area, they're just super excited that they can bring that to their customers. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And I think it's, it's about connecting that speed to applications and how do we use it. And so I guess on the heels of that, so obviously you're a gamer. Uh, so when you think about 5G ultra wideband, what do you think, uh, really, when you think about the capabilities, how does that elevate, you know, the gaming experience? Um, you know, uh, much like Mark, I mean, I think my first introduction was into, uh, you know, uh, fighting games. You know, Street Fighter Two is probably my favorite game. Uh, but as everything progressed, uh, you know, starting to play games like Halo and some of these, like, Unreal Tournament and first-person shooters, uh, what you start noticing is ping rates are incredibly important. And um, that's probably one of the things that I would tell you that I would highlight is how quick our ping rate is, where when you're going and you're respawning into a, into a game, you're not having to worry about that lag. So you can actually start getting into the game and not worry about getting, uh, uh, <laughs> basically getting killed immediately after, uh, after getting into the game. So that's something that I absolutely love. Uh, and I'm sure all, all gamers have, uh, have had that frustration of that low ping rate and those low lag. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So maybe you can help here. So not everyone yeah. watching uh, are gamers. So ping rate, and w what's that mean? So so ping rate is essentially your um, back and forth latency. Okay. Right? Like, so um, Chris is talking about a 12 ping. So 12 ping is amazing, right? If you can get 12 ping when you're playing Halo or any yeah. of those games, that's amazing. If you get a single digit, you're essentially almost like on a land, right? That's like professional play. Uh, so that's the holy grail, Yeah. right? If, if every, every gamer, um, you know, wants to have the lowest latency, but even more than just low, you have to have consistent ping, mm -hmm. right? So you don't have spikiness. You can predict where your shots are going, where the enemy is going to be at, and you're able to then actually um, perform to your best, right? It's your skill that's showing off, not your network or your hardware that's bringing. Yeah, yeah, perfect, awesome. So we're all learning something new, including yeah. myself. So obviously you're a gamer and you kind of touched on it, but just uh, shed some light. What type of games do you enjoy? Do you have some favorites out there? Uh, yeah, you know, um, uh, I, I probably the Final Fantasy series has always been my favorite, uh, personally. Um, you know, I've, uh, I've been playing since Nintendo, uh, you know, Dragon Warrior, uh, role-playing games, first-person shooters, street, uh, street Fighters. But I will tell you that, um, you know, lately I've been playing a lot of retro games with my kids uh, and kind of bringing those back, uh, back, back to uh, reality with, uh, with a lot of the Final Fantasy VII and, uh, and, um, and playing like Super Mario Brothers. It, it's incredible to see them light, you know, their faces light up when they're bringing up some of the old retro games. So that's kind of where I've been into. Um, and then, you know, on a, on a later uh, aspect, we sometimes play uh, Final Fantasy XIV, which is kind of a, uh, a uh, you know, uh, multiplayer online MMO. Uh, so kind of being in that creative world and constantly having the ability to just do extra things with friends from across the country is always a lot of fun. Yeah. It's funny, like I think about Super Mario Brothers. That's like what I <laughs> identify with in my kids. And I remember thinking, oh, I'm going to show this to them and they're going to play it for hours. Within like two hours, they beat the game. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this is, as a kid, <laughs> I spent hours doing it. So I think uh, times have come a long way. So, hey, one fun fact about you, uh, we heard that your wife is launching a YouTube channel about gaming. Uh, we, are you willing to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So when we were, uh, when we were having, um, the playing the games, like I was telling you, bringing up those retro games, you know, uh, I think we've all had uh, as parents have uh, been in a situation where, you know, we, it's kind of difficult to get our kids to start reading, especially in a digital age, right? Um, so what we started doing was that's what I started remembering when I was a kid. I was playing Final Fantasy and 
these games where you didn't have somebody reading uh, reading the lines. So you had to actually read the content. So what uh, we started doing was I started playing every character. Like we would change our voices. Uh, me and my wife, you know, we would just keep playing back and forth depending on what the character was. And we would get the kids involved and they started playing the characters as well. So, you know, whenever, let's just say Final Fantasy VII, one of the main characters is Cloud. I would have my son play Cloud and then I would play Barrett or I would play, you know, other characters. And we would just keep going back and forth. So um, the kids absolutely loved it. I mean, they keep asking for newer and newer games. And uh, my wife was like, well, why don't we just go ahead and make this a, a YouTube channel, you know, and maybe we can inspire other people to kind of look at media and digital as another alternative to even reading for their kids. Yeah, that's awesome. That is awesome. That's, awesome. that's really cool. Yeah, and this is the stuff when you think about gaming, you think about technology, yeah. who would have thought two, three years ago this is what we would be, you know, bringing in creativity that uh, people would be uh, engaging in. So that's awesome. Okay, so hey, last question for you. And I think it's kind of fun to talk and have this conversation because clearly – based on your role with the business, you love technology, uh, you love to game. So when you think about the future of gaming over 5G, I'm just curious on a personal note, like what excites you? What gets you excited about the technology? I, I think the, the idea of being able to stream um, really whatever you want on whatever platform. Um, you know, if you're, a, if you're a gamer, if you're a PC gamer, one of the difficult things that are going on right now is I can't get a graphics card. You know, um, I just feel, uh, finished building a PC a couple of years ago, and, you know, I played the hand-me-down game where I build a PC for myself, and then I kind of handed down the road for everyone to play. And, uh, you know, right now I'm looking to try to get a 3080, which is a, a graphics card for a PC. You just can't get it, right? Uh, where if we were in, uh, you know, technologies like Stadia, Google Stadia, you know, and, and things like that where it doesn't matter what your PC is. Um, it just really matters what your, your download rate is, what your ping rate is, and you can start utilizing servers and playing games over the air. That's kind of where I'm excited to see, you know, where the technology is going. Yeah, it's funny. I, so a big piece of, as I, I've learned about gaming, is, is talking to my kids and their friends, and this whole graphic card conversation <laughs> has been, you know, going on for the last six months where same thing. He can't get this yeah. graphics card. He just built his PC. So um, I might have him call you, and maybe you can help us out because uh, I've searched high and low, and I'm still scratching my head. So, hey, listen, thank you, Christopher. I appreciate your time. Thank you for everything you're doing to evangelize 5G there in Miami. Uh, and we'll uh, be back probably soon with some questions. So, hey, just a reminder that uh, this is interactive. So, again, uh, slido.com, hashtag Verizon. If you have any questions, we'd love to hear. And then uh, we'll get to them towards the end of the segment. So it looks like, David, I see you on. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Eric. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for joining us. Glad that you could be here and be uh, part of the conversation. And so as we talked earlier, and I was doing a little bit of uh, educating myself, what I've learned about you is that you enjoy leveraging 5G ultra wideband to stream PC games. Is that correct? Yep. Actually, uh, one thing Chris previously mentioned is uh, Google Stadia. Um, okay. I use a service called uh, GeForce Now and actually stream the games in high definition um, on my phone. So it's uh, awesome. pretty, pretty demanding. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so hey, do me a favor because our entire audience, again, we're all learning about gaming. So just... Give me a, a quick soundbite on what, what is PC gaming and how does that differ, and what does that mean to, to stream? So with PC gaming, uh, you have higher uh, frame rates, you have higher resolutions, uh, your graphics card can, can – it's just a workhorse to be able to give you the best graphics, the best, best experience while you're, while you're gaming. And uh, when you're streaming that over the Internet – um, you're not only streaming just like a high definition movie, but you're also interacting with that. So you're actually streaming the game from a from a remote server. Yeah, so it obviously it changes the experience. And so I guess the question is, would you have been able to, would you ever try this over 4G? I mean, I've done it on 4G, but it, it doesn't really work as, uh, as good as you like because of the ping and the latent, latency and the speed. But um, I was actually able to uh, to use it over the 5G ultra wideband, and it's a night and day difference. Yeah. So what I love about this conversation is exactly what you and I talked about at the beginning, which when you educated me, which is when it comes to the gaming community, it's all about prove it and show me. Exactly. You know, don't talk about it. And so the reason I, I, I love this conversation is that it's exactly what you're telling me. You're like, yeah, I tried it. I did it. But when I do it on 5G ultra wideband, it works. And I think that's that's the proof point that people need to hear. I think one of, one of the things, too, about the stream is that if you're playing a game where it's solo, yeah. and you're just interacting with the environment, yeah. that's one thing. But if you're playing against other players and 
that latency becomes even more important. Like that is, you know, that's the close to single digit latency yeah. that are paying that Chris was talking about. And I think David knows exactly what I'm talking about. Once you're playing against somebody else, that becomes extremely crucial. And that is the game changing. All right. intended. That, yeah. That's the game changing. Yeah, that's what we've been talking about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what we've yeah, been talking it, about this whole time. Yeah, it makes a difference between winning and losing a match. I mean, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. No. Perfect. Okay. So uh, the, the other thing I'm thinking about. So obviously, you're a game. Everyone part of this obviously conversation is. So as you think about customers, you're in the store. You obviously have an opportunity to come across other customers who enjoy gaming. How do you bring that into the conversation, and how do you position the capabilities? Well, I mean, the first thing is you ask a customer how do they use their phone, and uh, some people are like, hey, you know, I, I I like play games on my phone, and then we start talking about you know what kind of games they like. Um, do they have any systems at home? Um, and basically just get into that conversation and it, it can lead into a whole bunch of different things. Yeah. So if you think about, again, everyone watching uh, from the consumer group, many of us uh, are not gamers. So what advice would you give me and give others as we're trying to learn about gaming and how might we talk to customers? Um, well, for instance, um, our uh, Get More uh, Unlimited plan has... Uh, uh, Apple Arcade built in, and uh, I recently learned that Apple Arcade is just like the system, the the streaming service I use. It actually streams the mobile games over the internet, hmm. and so just the 5G in general is going to make a big difference there. And it's also in high def. So, yeah, you can also choose Google for you uh, Android users. There you so go. You get the, the <laughs> Google. Yep, yep. Make sure we're balancing that out. Yeah, no, but the, yeah, but. Yeah. This is this is the education and the proof points that we need because, you know, I guarantee you everyone watching probably had an aha moment as you shared that. And so I appreciate it. So, hey, I'm going to switch gears entirely. I know we're talking about gaming, but what I learned about you as well is that you're a big fan of VZ Protect. Is that true? Uh, yeah. And uh, Verizon Protect Home as well. But uh, actually, one of the conversations that you talking about, you know, people gaming at home, um, one of the systems and one of the tech in their house that that gets the most wear and tear and can fail more uh more frequently is your video game systems you know your playstation your xbox you get a red ring of death and uh with verizon protect home you don't have to worry about that we'll get a you know five day turnaround time and you get it replaced instead of having to go out there and uh have to deal with scalpers because those are also in short supply just like graphics cards are right now so <laughs> so i've taken have you have you used the have you had a chance to file a claim of your own I actually just got an Xbox One X replaced uh, uh, last month, so yeah, and uh, that was it was it was very nice because I did not want to go out and buy one. So <laughs> yeah, I know the biggest advocates are folks that use it. I was in a store in the Bay Area not too long ago, and it's in a similar situation on Xbox, but a flat screen. It dropped, it cracked within three days. They had a brand new flat screen. I think the TV was you know three or four years old. So perfect. Hey, so we'll come back to you here in a moment. Thank you for the conversation again. If you have any questions. For the group, uh, slido.com, hashtag Verizon. We'd love to hear what's on your mind. And so next, uh, we will turn the conversation over to Sebastian. Good afternoon, Sebastian. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, guys. You got it. Thanks for joining the conversation. So let's talk a little bit about you. I know you're an enthusiast. When most people talk about mobile gaming, they're thinking about maybe using their phone, playing with apps, and that's a, fo a form of it, and that's fine. But uh, you take it to a whole new level with streaming and streaming your games. So uh, again, for the audience, can you tell us really what that means and why it's a big deal for you? Right, yeah. So um, it was kind of briefly touched on before, but basically um, game streaming is really becoming more viable, especially with the, the 5G technology out there. Um, the basic kind of like concept behind it is you have like a library of uh, AAA, like console quality games um, that are on the cloud. And you can access those games from um, any mobile device, pretty much, uh, Android, iOS, uh, tablets, um, and you can basically even like Bluetooth the controller to those devices, and you can play them um, over a mobile network. Yeah. So you really see, tell us a little bit, when you think about 5G ultra-wideband, what's, what's the experience there, and how does that change it? Right, so 5G is literally like, it's almost as if it was made for this moment. Um, it, uh, these, these streaming services perform the best over 5G. Um, with the like ultra low latency of ping as we were talking about before, that's super important when you're playing pretty much any type of video game. Um, you move your character on the screen, you want them to move at the same time that you actually do it in real time. And that's possible with 5G. Uh, also yeah. having super fast download speeds contributes to that as well. Um, so even more recently, um, you're able to even 
stream these games in up to 4K resolution, uh, 120 frames per second, which is like absolutely insane. Um, to have that kind of quality, you typically need like a $5,000 gaming PC um, or even like one of the new next gen consoles, which are, as we were kind of talking about, the graphics cards in super high demand and not really available anywhere. Um, so it just makes everything super accessible for pretty much anyone that has access to a 5G device. Yeah, I love I love what you said. It was yeah. built for this moment. Oh, I think we have a new tagline. No, it's definitely. Yeah, it's almost is... like it's 5G built for games. Yeah, yeah. something like that. Something I've like heard that, that line before. That, yeah. Yes. No, but but what's cool about this conversation? We're obviously in a store right now, and we think about when we first introduced 5G. What everyone's been waiting for is show me the experience, show me the technology. And so when we think about gaming, we think about 5G ultra wideband. We think ultimately with Mech about bringing all that computation to the edge, physical edge of the network, and how that completely changes what you're able to do. Uh, this is what we're trying to get you know, people excited about. And I guess just from your point of view, I asked this to the other guests as well. When you think about just, again, folks that may not be familiar with the gaming space but are talking to customers, what, what words of advice would you have just to speak to our capabilities to connect the dots? Um, really just, I feel like most households now have a gamer in them, whether it's adult, kids, um, just having uh, the 5G capabilities to allow them access to whatever they're used to playing at home, even on like their, their Xbox or their PlayStation, and they can get it on a mobile device. Um, it's just so accessible now that, um, yeah. Yeah, it's something that connects with everyone. Yes, you nailed it. Uh, according to our research, seven out of 10 U.S. households have at least one. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you nailed it, man. We have three in like three or four different consoles <laughs> and a PC. So I don't know how any of them work, but I mean, they're there. So we can validate the proof point. So yeah. awesome. Okay. Hey, uh, and this isn't a loaded question. I just love to hear your point of view. So with um, the introduction, at least uh, in our stores of Apple Arcade, uh, Google Play Pass, Pokemon, have you seen that help drive traffic or are customers uh, inquiring about that? Oh, definitely. Um, yeah, when you can speak to um, already all the other streaming services that are included with our plans, and then you also get gaming services included with that on top of it, um, it's kind of like the icing on the cake when you're kind of going over the, the features that are included with our plans. Um, and then also kind of with the, all the Pokemon Go uh, events that we've had kind of going uh, over the past couple months, um, traffic has also been really super increased because of that as well. Yeah. So I did hear, and uh, I'll put you on the spot here for a moment, that over the Memorial Day weekend, <laughs> you had someone come in to switch to be part of the uh, Pokemon event. Is that true? Yes, that is correct. Um, yeah, we, I had a customer come in. Um, basically, he heard about the event that Verizon was doing. He wanted access to uh, the uh, time, like Pokemon and, and items that he could that he could receive from it. Um, and he literally ported his number from a different carrier. Uh, took advantage of the the free iPhone 12 mini promotion that we had going on, um, so we got a, a 5G ultra wideband compatible device plan, and um, he literally switched for that event. I think it really kind of speaks to how passionate the gaming community is in general. Um, that we're, we're willing to do that kind of stuff just for a, a little event like that. Yeah, yeah, I think you nailed it. I, I I think that's what we're uncovering is how passionate the community is. I know you and I are going to talk in a moment about Pokemon and really what the strategy. I think people know about it, but they're not sure how the strategy ties back. So we're going we're gonna to address that. So, hey, Sebastian, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for everything you're doing. We'll probably come back to you in a moment uh, for some questions. But now we finally get to turn the conversation to you. Right. So let's uh, jump right yes. in. So uh, first of all, just for the group, uh, I don't, like, like I said, when you and I first met, I, I had no idea the job even existed. So uh, <laughs> awesome, it exists. Tell, tell us a bit about what you do. Yeah, so I would love to tell you that uh, I spend my days playing Fortnite in Valorant. Which you do. Which is, th those are the nights, uh, but the days are really filled with, um, you know, really building a cross Verizon yeah. gaming strategy, right? And that goes from driving the brand, uh, driving preference for our 5G network, yeah. um, also driving the business. And also uh, my team manages a lot of our partnerships, right? Some with some of the best game publishers yeah. like Riot, Epic, Electronic Arts, Bionics, and also across the community, too, with some of the best partners out there. Twitch, for instance, um, Team Liquid, I'm supporting their jersey today, Team Dignitas. With no name on the back, by the way. Yeah, with, without my gamer tag on the back. And what's your gamer team. tag? It's blue. Blue. With a lot of O's. Okay. You guys figure that one out. Um, and then also Dr. Lupo, who I've worked with for a number of years, yeah. because he's actually the one of the most technical gamer streamers on Twitch. Like, yeah. he used to be an IT director. And he knows more than a lot of engineers. Yeah. So we're like, yeah. And he's a Verizon customer, awesome. right? Yeah. So those are the things that I get super excited about working with. 
partnerships, driving the strategy, and and then playing Valorant. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> this next question, uh, you can. I know you've gone for hours on this, but yes. what, why does gaming matter to Verizon? I think you should remember our audience. You have people that love gaming, like our folks that are participating. I think you've got a lot of folks out there being like, "What? How does this fit? Tick and tie? Mm -hmm. Like, just tell us why does it matter? Why is it such a big deal?" So, so I think there's really three big components. Yeah. The first one, let's just look at the numbers, right? The numbers okay. speak volumes. So in the U.S., there's 190 million gamers, right? And I think Sebastian nailed it too. Like the majority of families have a gamer in the household. Yep. And the way that we have to look at gamers now is that gamers are the majority, not the minority, right? More than half of U.S. Um, adults are gamers. Like there's a wide gamut of gamers from the, the most avid, like like our friends here, to yep. very casual players. But that's the majority, yep. right? That's a huge paradigm shift. So everybody just... Click that in your mind, like go from niche gamers yeah. to majority gamers, because yeah. it's a top three digital yeah. usage, right? right? And that leads me to number two, right? Gamers, especially the more avid the gamer is, the more hardcore, the more competitive, the more they care about 5G, sure, right? Because it's about the game, the hardware, and the, and the connectivity. And the more they're into gaming, the more they care about it. And that's how we get to really demonstrate our 5G yeah. leadership. So yeah. that's number two. And number three, this is a great opportunity for us to drive the business, right? Because of the first two. Right. Plus, it gives us an opportunity to sell up to premium FG mobile. Right. Like Sebastian gave an, an amazing example, right? Yeah. Expanding home internet, right? As, as we're expanding our footprint, that's a huge yeah. example. And then also extending the business to hardware, services, consoles, accessories, and things like that, and actually driving the business and growing the business through game. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, you know, for folks uh, on the consumer team, I mean, the idea that, you know, in the near future we could have, you know, obviously accessories, consoles in the Absolutely. store is a far cry from, from where, we, where we were. And I think you're, you're right on the connectivity and the proof point. Um, I'll just tell you, when you and I first started talking, I didn't realize how big the opportunity was. And I think yeah. some were thinking we're going to take existing customers at light gaming and enhance it. But the strategy is all about how do we actually bring on new customers. Exactly. And what I'm hearing even from this group is word of mouth is best. If it works and people tell you about it, Absolutely. that will be the, the evangelism that, mm -hmm. that we need. So, hey, you kind of touched on it, but I think it'd be good for the group to hear, you know, what are some of the recent partnerships uh, that we've done that you think would right, kind of resonate with the gaming community? Yeah, absolutely. So the way that we're approaching partnerships is very holistic, right? So we don't just go in with a sponsorship. We really, we, we're talking about partnerships beyond sponsorships. So I'll give a couple examples. There's a lot out there. Um, and we'll talk about Niantic in a second. Yep. But Riot is a really good example, right? So they give us a ton of reach, right? Because they run the biggest esports events in the world with League of Legends, Valorant, um, and, and what games. In fact, League of Legends finals, billion hours watched like just the finals by itself yeah, a billion, billion hours, hours watched. yeah yeah like what else gets you yeah. a billion hours right that's like unheard of and then we're actually developing 5g stage moments with them yep right we're developing uh co-streaming opportunities we're actually doing things where 5g shows up on that biggest stage yep right then we're actually working with them on the development side right so on the content side and then we're also working with them on responsible business right through hmm. the game changers where we're elevating women in esports. So it's a really holistic opportunity. Plus we also have you know opportunities for business back. So if we look at these partnerships, they get us out there, they give us that that credibility. It's a, a load of fun to work with them, but at the same time they're driving the business for yeah. us. Right. Then we also have folks like Team Liquid where we that's how we help win the community. Right. So they're one of the most winning teams out there. They have, you know, great technology partnerships that, you know, we have really good synergy and huge dedication to DNI with folks like Ariel Powers, who is a WNBA, um, you know, yeah. world champion um, and an advocate for um, women and black gamers. Right. So yeah. those types of partnerships really gives us that holistic look. And the last one I want to hit on is just epic. Yep. Um, you know, I think everybody saw the Super Bowl stadium that we did. And that's how we authentically show up to the community, right? We said, hey, you can't all be together this year with your friends and your family at the Super Bowl. How do we bring this to you in a way that's never been done before? So yeah. we worked with the NFL, we worked with Epic, and we built a stadium where 20 million people went into the stadium every single day wow. during that week, yeah. right? So that's a scale that's absolutely unheard of before yeah. in a way that 
is exciting and it's just never been done before. So these are the exciting types of partnerships yeah. that we're able to do that are very much holistic and really benefit across yeah. the business. And I think, I love what, what you're saying. I just think for the broader group, just to yeah. think back at our business, if you would, again, two years ago, these are the type of partnerships we would have had, we would have been like, no way. So I think when you think about how we're evolving as a business, I think it's important to be mindful. So, hey, we are running up against time, so I'm yeah. gonna jump straight to questions. We'll see, I think this actually touched on a couple things that I wanna talk about anyway. So I apologize if we, if we go over a minute here, but I think this is important. So like 3G and 4G innovations, many of these, uh, uses couldn't even be imagined until they were launched. So think Uber, et cetera. Mm -hmm. What types of innovation would you love to see in the future in the world of gaming as it relates to 5G? I think the holy grail for gamers, and I think Sebastian and David, you guys nailed it already, is being able to play all your games anywhere from any device. Like it, it should, you shouldn't have to say, hey, I gotta wait till I get home to my console or to my PC. You're, you're on the road, yep. you're traveling, you're at the airport or you know, at school. Don't do that at school, anybody, all right? But you get to play the game yeah. the way that they're meant to be played from anywhere. That is the holy grail. Yeah, that's right. awesome. I love, which is what you said from day one. Exactly. Right? That is the game changer yeah. uh, with 5G, so I love it. Okay, uh, next question here. So you may not be able to speak to specifics, but do you see Verizon starting partnerships in console and PC gaming similar to the mobile partnerships like we have with Niantic? Yes. 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 Uh, okay, uh, I'm going to take this one. Eric, for those of us in retail, do you see any in-store gaming demonstrations coming? Uh, yes, and thanks for the question. So they, the short answer is yes, and we're working on it. We're actually working on bringing a section of our store to uh, a gaming experience where employees and customers can engage. Do you want to touch 30 seconds on the tournament that we're building for the entire uh, consumer group in Telesales? Yeah, absolutely. So um, one of the great things that we're, we're, we want to do is um, to really – you know, walk the walk, you know, not, not just talk the talk, right? And we're, we're actually doing yep. our very first um, Verizon gaming tournament uh, for employees. Um, and it's going to be around uh, FIFA Mobile. And we yep. want to do that because one, you know, soccer is ubiquitous, right? Yep. Two, it's family friendly. Three, everybody has, you know, the right, right devices. And we wanted to actually do something that was very uh, embracing it and sure. bringing folks in. Um, and you know, we're going to be coming up with some really cool prizes. So we have tournaments, concerts, um, sporting events, um, celebrity meet and greet type things where we can actually help to, you know, sort of, yeah. you know, sweeten the pie a little bit yeah. uh, for the people that are competing. So yeah. I don't know about the gamers that are on this, but I mean, like, this is just the tip of the iceberg. If we, you know, do well with this, we would love to expand to other titles, yeah. uh, bring in, you know, pro players and stuff like yeah. that. The, the sky's the limit. Yeah. And it's really about really infusing that gaming into our DNA. So we're just walking the walk and having a great time doing it. Yeah. If you're not having a good time, you're doing what it What are wrong. we doing? Yeah, doing yeah. Wrong. perfect. Well, look, we, we are out of time, but thank you. So yes, we're bringing it to our stores. Yes, we're bringing it to uh, each and every one of you. For those of you who want to participate and learn and engage, uh, it's going to be a great experience. So I uh, just want to, you know, huge shout out to our team and everyone that participated uh, on the call today. Uh, it meant a lot to us. Thank you for your knowledge and sharing. Uh, we'll be back again this time next month with all things SMB for our third live uh, hashtag swag stream. So thank you. Make it a great day and we'll see you soon.